So let me know if you guys like this series or wherever. It's just an impromptu video. I was recording a video for um, this device right here from Fine Fine. That's probably going to drop, I would say, next week. But I was about to do some B-roll and everything like that. And I had something interesting pop into my feed on YouTube. And I'll go ahead and put the little comment section right now. Apparently, TC uh, Helicon is not going anywhere. The GoXLR is still getting software updates. And it seems like it's actually something that people have been asking for a long time in this software update so what does that mean for you as a content creator and what does that mean for me for me it means that i need to go ahead and apologize because i thought that they weren't going to go anywhere i thought they were going to go somewhere and it was not going to be um i say um conducive to you as a new content creator or just a content creator in general looking for an audio interface to pay that much money for something that was going to die within a few years and i know that it would take a while with the updates of operating software platforms or wherever for it to to finally just not be able to function anymore because it's not being um, supplied with updates from the actual manufacturer or the de software development team it was going to be more community based so again it's it's back or never gone anywhere whatever however you want to look at it um and is it still worth the price in my personal opinion i don't think so I think that they need to go ahead and drop the price on it. It's kind of in the same boat with the Shure SM7B, in my personal opinion, and even the Shure SM7 uh, DB or whatever, uh, being $100 more. It's more of you're riding on the coattails of you being a company that's been established inside of a space. And there's really no reasons for you to still charge that much, even though your product is considered good or one of the leading products or wherever. And you're just justifying your price at this point for that. There's a lot more, I would say, microphones out there that are below $200 or um, below even $100 that are going to allow new content creators to be able to get really good audio as long as they learn how to edit their microphone or edit their audio. And that's something that you should be doing as a content creator. Anyways, I'm still trying to lock it in. I'm still trying. I'm, I'm, I'm failing at it. You know what I'm saying? Admittedly, I'm not the best when it comes to that, but that's the process of being a content creator. And I'll put a sound clip right now of somebody who has the Shure some seven be one of the biggest names in content creation for as apex goes um i actually looked them up the other day on stream or whatever because i was like i don't know why people play like this i guess they're trying to be like the biggest apex player out there and i was like i don't even know who that is so i typed it in apparently this is one of them and he has to show us some 7b and it sounds completely just garbo it, it, it's terrible and i think it's um, about time that I let you guys know that I am no longer working with Muffin. He did a really great job in the channel. He kept uploading daily and, you know, doing edits for my highlights of my stream and just, you know, putting it out for you guys on the main channel, uh, for day to day. And he did a really good job. And that's what I, I wanted from him. Uh, as time went on. Do you think they ever do work to balance MK and controller more? Holy shit, you're, it's Timmy. Uh, probably not. Holy shit, <laughs> it's Timmy. It's Yo. The real, it's Timmy. Yo, it's the real Timmy. It's hard. It's hard to cater to both. It really is. It's, how, it's just how the, the gaming industry is. So that's the little clip or wherever it's no knock to him or wherever. Apparently he's really good. Apparently he has records or wherever of doing, you know, uh, rookie to to Pred or wherever and he, like he's well known has a sign with uh, apparently Red Bull and stuff but in my personal opinion it's like nobody has went into his room not even Red Bull or anybody it was like hey I'm gonna throw some sound panels up or wherever to absorb that echo um, maybe you should run some software to you know have VSTs on your microphone because it sounds like you're in a church or wherever yelling and screaming and stuff and it's like I don't know how anybody's eardrums don't rupture. I, I couldn't even listen to them for enough or wherever to actually just download the little sound clip or wherever from this video. And I imagine in editing or wherever, I'm gonna have to mute it until you know I render the video because it's just literally that bad. Um, and I don't know how anybody can you know sit there in his streams and it's mostly probably because he's a really good player and they turn down the volume wherever on the stream, but it's like, how long have you been doing this and you have the Shure SM7B and, and nobody has told you about this audio issue? It's it's crazy to me, unless that's what you're going for. It's crazy to me to have that expensive microphone and still have it sounding bad. And I've looked that he's not the only one that I've seen with the Shure SM7B and having it not sound 
like what people typically think of when they see the microphone or they hear the name Sure some 7 b and that's what I'm saying. You need to have some experience. You need to kind of know what you're doing or wherever, setting up the microphone and everything. And in my personal opinion, it's just not worth it when you have other microphones that are less or wherever, and it has a USB option and XLR option. And usually through that USB, you can find some microphones out there from companies that have software that's going to attune the microphone or wherever to your needs. And we're seeing stuff like even Lewitt just came out with the audio mixer or wherever not too long ago um, that actually has AI built in that will, you know, dial in your gain and dial in other specific things or wherever of the microphone by itself you just have to talk into it or not talk and it takes all this information in or wherever and makes the microphone sound good obviously if you're a little bit i would say intuitive with a software you can go in and make minor critiques but to get you up and running as a content creator it's going to be a lot more um, worth your money than going out and getting the sure some 7b now admittedly these audio mixers are going to cost a little bit more um than i would like but at the same time the what they're bringing to the table at least kind of warrants what they're charging in my personal opinion and like i said it's not just them and dlz mackie dlz creator series they have ai built into their you know stuff wherever admittedly it's more for podcasting and and the likes of that category as far as streaming goes or recording but it still has software built into the actual physical device that will help you set up those vsts and, and the microphone gain and all that stuff wherever depending on your level of expertise within the field and that's what i'm saying like you have go xlr over here that's you know playing catch up with the software and the physical device and stuff like that and they're still charging the same amount that they've been charging for since i would say forever and like i said you have now competing uh devices at that pro at that price and sometimes even cheaper that's going to be way better for content creators because again it's less of a headache and a worry of setting it up i've had multiple people ask me how to set up a gold xlr how to get the best sounding out of their sure sm7b and it, i don't have neither devices so i can't really help them so it's like why are you charging that much for these devices? And like I said, they're riding on the coattails of their namesake because they've been around and they're known for it and they've been around for a while and the product is in high demand. So they're like, we can still charge, you know, this amount for these devices. And in all actuality, times have changed. New products, companies are catching on, especially after COVID because everybody can be a content creator now. And the problem with content creation is everybody has a platform but the good thing about content creation is that everybody has a platform so companies know this and they're trying to get you know into the space especially for gaming and streaming and not just the podcasting space and i've seen a lot of people use the stuff like the mackie and the roads and stuff and bring it over into the twitch streaming for gaming and like kick streaming for gaming and stuff but they run into some limitations they run into some drawbacks because the devices were not meant to be used in that fashion so what are devices out there the go xlr and now that it's staying around it's still a good choice you have the wave uh i would say ecosystem from elgato the only one that's really good is probably in my personal opinion is the stream deck plus and maybe the wave xlr um but primarily i would say more so the stream deck plus even though it's 200 dollars, it's overpriced in my personal opinion but you know you still have physical controls and you get access to the software and then you can bring in any audio device that you want or uh, wherever into the software and have the vsts and plugins and have ways to control individual submixes which streamers who are playing video games and discord and all that stuff wherever need to be able to have access to a lot of these devices even the likes of i would imagine the lewitt device the um the mackie devices and the road devices a lot of them don't have access to software that's like that and have physical controls on it most of them are just maintainly are mainly towards the actual xlr input they're not meant to handle those submixes and if they have software that has submixes that you can control on the computer you don't have the control of that software that's on the computer on the physical hardware and that's again what streamers who are playing video games and stuff need that's why the stream deck plus is so powerful and so many people buy it or wherever even at that exorbitant amount because of the capability of having physical control over the software and i'll put on screen i think it's the mackie mainstream or wherever that's where this device fails and they're 
they're charging that as much as they are for that device it has like the capture card it has all the other capabilities but it doesn't have physical control over the software and they're charging that much and it's like i said in the previous video what were they thinking they didn't get any input from any kind of streamer out there who actually streams video games who actually knows what people need and it's for streamers and the same thing with the rogue streamer x it doesn't have physical control over the software it just doesn't make any sense to me and i know there's other stuff out there like the razor one or whatever but there's not enough video evidence of it still being worked on still getting software updates what is it like now it's been released for a while um and if nobody's talking about it not even like negative things really i don't really see a reason to recommend it or even talk about it to be honest um another one is from the comment sections of my previous videos people have said check out the roland uh, bridge caster or wherever uh bridge cast and from what i've seen it's a very decent device the only problem is is that when it comes to you know making videos i have a microphone over here that's an xlr i have the overhead microphone that's an xlr i have my streaming microphone which is an xlr i have a 3.5 millimeter lavalier system and this 3.5 millimeter um you know microphone whatever shotgun microphone that i need all this audio to be routed into a software and apply vsts because it's easier that way to capture all this in one take i can capture all this switching the cameras and stuff like that capture the audio add vsts and plugins to it or wherever and just record into obs at 4k like i can do that and then go into my editing software add vsts plugins and stuff like that if i need to change up the audio edit it like i said i'm not the best but i'm learning and i can do all that instead of grabbing you no know, audio files and video files from independent cameras and then having to sync up stuff like this in post I don't have to do that you know what i'm saying and when you're a content creator not only doing stuff like this but also streaming you need something like that because i can go right over there go live on kick link in the description and i can sit there and use what i'm using or wherever to change the music around for me or wherever lower stuff mute discord for my stream but listen to it or wherever privately if i need to turn off music for me while i'm playing apex so i can hear the audio because the audio is already terrible in the game but y'all can hear the music still on stream like having those capabilities and having it as a, as a touch of a button doing something like this as a touch of a button or having a physical slider or wherever over there and adjusting the volume on the fly and not having to alt tab out of the game and stuff like that and control that audio i can just do it from a little deck or numpad whatever you want to call it that's what streamers need that's what the content creator who is coming up nowadays especially getting into twitch streaming kick streaming video game streaming as well as recording videos and stuff and doing other things as a content creator a multi-faceted content creator somebody who's actually a variety content creator not this oh i variety stream because i play one game and then i play a different game that's not variety content creator i'm talking about actual true variety that's the stuff that content creators need and unfortunately like i said the the road products the mac and dlz creator product series or wherever they're good products don't get me wrong they're good for the category of content that they're meant to be made for or wherever and used in but when you start going into what actual content creators need the newer version of a content creator nowadays needs they start showing what they're uh incapable of so again still having you know the go xlr around is good at that price I, I, as far as if you already have it, it's good news. You know what I'm saying? If you're able to get it secondhand at a very steep discounted price, like $200 or something like that, that's a, that's really good. Um, especially if you can get your hands on one of the new white ones, because it looks really good. And like I said, it's really good that the software is staying around the company and stuff like that. And if you don't need the mo multiple microphone inputs like I do, then you know what I'm saying? It's, it's good. But if you're a newer content creator who's starting out, who's maybe using a USB microphone right now and is looking to get an XLR interface, I would not go with the Go XLR. It's not a bad interface. That's not it. It's literally just the price and what you have in the competing market nowadays, like the Stream Deck Plus. And then you could get something like a cheap audio interface that maybe some people said the preamps are not that good or wherever and like the fine fine sc3 but that's a 50 dollar mixer you know what i'm saying or even if you want to get a little bit i would say more sophisticated i would say device or wherever you can go with something like the comica adcaster c2 
Both of those devices I've done a review on, but you can use in conjunction with the Stream Deck Plus. And mind you, the, the comical one is $180, roughly around that. So you're gonna, you know, obviously be spending a little bit more, but you're gonna get the physical controls of the submixes through the Stream Deck Plus. And with the Comica Adcaster C2, you can hook up multiple different microphones or wherever, at least two XLR inputs and a 3.5 millimeter jack. You can have, you know, um, maybe a sniffing other for a reaction video or something like that. Or somebody comes on stream or something like that and they don't have to, you don't have to share a microphone. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you have two headphone outputs you know, and you have the little gimmicky stuff that people apparently like to use as far as like the auto tune, the robot voice, all that stuff. You have those capabilities. You know what I'm saying? You have the aux in, the aux out and all that stuff. And it has a battery life so you could travel with it if that's what you want to do for whatever reason. Um, and it just it's just a better, I would say, audio mixer or wherever for, I would say, the budget content creator who does stuff like this. And you maybe you want that little added thing or wherever for maybe game streaming every now and then, then the Stream Deck Plus is going to be the way to go. But like I said, even for that or wherever, that's like what, $380, almost $400. Um, and you're getting, you know, two different devices, obviously, but at least you're having physical controls. And again, you could still just save up for at one point or wherever to get an XLR interface. You don't have to go with the comical one. There's other XLR interfaces out there or wherever. You could get, you know, the Wave XLR and the Stream Deck Plus, or you can just get the Stream Deck Plus and use whatever USB microphone that you want to use, and you still get access to the VSTs. And at least on the device itself, you can control the individual submixes as a gaming streamer. You see what I'm saying? So you don't really have to go out there and spend $400, $500 or wherever for these devices and microphones like these companies companies and all these other people in comment sections of videos and other content creators are telling you to get because you're just starting out. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't know what you're going to want and you don't know what you need as far as you as the specific content creator. I could be saying don't get the Mackie DLC creator series or the road to uh, po uh, podcaster, you know, duo and all that stuff. But that might be the actual device that you need, depending on the type of content that you're making. You know what I'm saying? So you need to look at the category of content that you're making and what you want to do as a content creator and then find a device where for you. You know what I'm saying? There's not going to be this all in one perfect device out there. It just doesn't exist. There's always going to be drawbacks. Everything that's man made has its problems and issues. You know what I'm saying? Nothing is completely perfect. What device that I like might not be the device that you like or that you necessarily need. It might be more expensive than you need. It might not be what you need or wherever. And maybe you do need that more expensive device. But look, all I'm saying is, is that the Roland Bridgecaster or wherever that a lot of people are telling me to take a look at, it does look like a good device, but it just doesn't have the, as much, uh, say, microphone option inputs that I need. But from the videos that I've seen, and I'll try to link some down and below that go over the device, it seems to be a good option. It's still a little bit, I would say, somewhat expensive or wherever as a new content creator who probably doesn't know what they should be spending their money on and allocating funds correctly. But it's a, I would say it's a good start, in my personal opinion, based on the videos I've seen and at least the feedback in the comment section based off of what you guys have been saying. Um, another device that I recommend, like I said, Stream Deck Plus. You can keep a USB microphone, have access to the VSTs and stuff, pay $200 and never really have to change or upgrade or anything like that. And on top of that, nine times out of 10, people are going to get some kind of stream deck anyways. So you're already probably going to be in that ecosystem. So you, it's it's going to be good. I just, like I said, the price, eh, I'm still debating on getting a, a one or wherever. I'm not sure. Um, And then I would avoid the Rode Streamer X. I would avoid the Mackie mainstream. Um, yes, they have capture cards and stuff like that, but they don't have the physical controls. You as a streamer who is going to be playing video games and stuff, the managing sound, you're going to want those controls. I'm telling you, just based off my experience from streaming from like 2014, 15 or wherever time frame, you're going to want to have those physical controls. I am telling you, that's something I can guarantee that you're going to want as a content creator who is streaming. You're going to want some way to physically control what you're hearing versus what your stream is hearing. And even if you can't change change what your stream is hearing versus what you're hearing, you're still going to want a physical control over the software that comes with devices. 
especially if you're in the middle of, like I said, a BR like Warzone, Apex, something like that, and then you need to adjust something on the fly or pause the music for you and your ears or pause the music for your stream so you, nobody hears music, you're, it's something like that, you're gonna want a physical control. You're not gonna want to alt tab out of your full screen game or you know alt tab out of whatever you're doing, period, and go over to another screen and, and do it. Some people say they don't have a problem doing that. They don't mind doing it. That that's up to you but i'm telling you as somebody who's experienced having to do both even playing from console and having to reach over you know and grab my mouse and find the software and lower it and all that and adjust it i'm telling you having just a dedicated physical device that's going to do that it's it, it it's a it's a i could you could say it's a luxury or wherever it's nice to have i'm telling you um it's going to ease a lot of uh, growing pains as you as a content creator getting into the space um, that's just my personal opinion. But yeah, if you can get your hands on a second hand Go XLR, then go ahead. Bridgecaster uh, or Bridgecast from Roland or wherever, go ahead. Um, Stream Deck Plus, even though, again, price, it, the software is still going to have its jankiness. I have issues with it, but I can still somewhat recommend it. Go ahead. Um, those are the devices I would recommend. The Avermedia Nexus, I know I talked about it in a previous video and I kind of recommended it. But at this point, I would hold off and see what if you know, Avermedia introduces a newer version of it because at the price point that is still at or wherever and being showing its age, especially, um, you know, with the software, you know, still continues getting the updates, but still kind of showing its age as far as the inputs and the capabilities of it and wherever, I would hold off just a little bit to see if they're going to introduce a newer version of it. And if they do, as long as it's decently reasonably priced maybe at the same price point of like 300 dollars, then that might be uh something that i would go ahead and recommend uh, as far as the razor stuff just just leave it alone there's too many back and forth as far as the software goes i've had the razor huntsman mini or whatever as far as the keyboard and software I, it was a bad experience in my personal opinion but some people don't have a problem with the razor software so and then some people do it's kind of like back and forth like the whole elgato stuff and they're not on the level of elgato so as far as their software goes at least in my personal experience so i would just completely avoid them uh, altogether i would just completely avoid them now again the the road and the mackie stuff they're still good other than mackie mainstream and the road streamer x though those are terrible i don't know what they were thinking as far as being that for actual gaming streamers i don't know what they were thinking about that if you don't have physical controls over your software on your stuff and you're saying that is for gaming streaming you have no idea what you're doing in this space um but they know what they're doing as far as in the podcast category or wherever inside of content creation if that's more what you need and maybe gaming is kind of taking a back seat but sometimes you do it every now and then i would say take a look at those devices um that might be good for you especially the mackie i would say i do like the device of the creator series especially the x uh s or whatever being a smaller footprint and having like i said the digital ai inside of it that you know tunes your microphone to the way you need it especially like the stuff like the from Lewit and stuff we're seeing this being more offered inside of software and as long as you don't mind not having so much control over any other sound it just you can route the audio in but you're not going to have physical control i would say over the sound versus what you're hearing versus what you're stream hearing so if you turn down the music on the device it's going to turn on the music for all over you know what i'm saying and um as long as you don't have a problem with that then i would say honestly between the two devices just see the pros and cons and i'll leave a pros and cons video where we're comparing them in a great detail in the description um from tom he's a really good great content creator here on youtube uh but yeah i would suggest in my personal opinion i lead lean a little bit more to the mackie stuff because again it has that ai that's going to dial that in especially if you're not um like i said fluent with inside of the space of audio engineering or knowing what you're doing as far as vsts and stuff and that's why i said i'm thinking about getting that device over the the elgato stream deck plus but at the same time i might still need the stream deck plus because having the physical controls over you know the sub mixes or wherever is it's it's a very good and alluring thing it's just that price tag man unless i can find it refurbished or wherever that price tag is pretty steep to me especially like i said if i'm already looking at the mackie dlz creator xs so hopefully in the future i can get one of those devices because i just need multiple microphone inputs but like i said 
all the recommendations or whatever will be listed in uh, the description. They're going to be affiliate links, of course. But let me know what you guys think about this kind of discussion and stuff. Let me know if there's an audio device that maybe I overlooked or something like that. But I think I pretty much covered what you're going to need as far as a content creator and my overall thoughts of, you know, Galaxy are not going anywhere. So. I don't know. That's just my thoughts and opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I usually do product reviews. So, you know, turn on the notification bell. See when that video goes live. Leave a like on the video. Again, if you liked it, if you didn't like it and you think I'm just crazy, you can dislike it and make it the most disliked video on YouTube. I, that doesn't matter to me, really, honestly. Um, and then on top of that, if you want to see any of my live streams, there's a live stream link down below. Check it out and I'll catch you guys in the next product review and um, product view playlist should be popping up somewhere on the screen. Uh, okay, deuces.